<laughs> Take it away. And of course, this is our leading story tonight. Cheaper United has parted ways with their head coach, Letlochonolo Siema, following a string of poor results. Siema has just registered a single win so far in the season after eight matches. The Chile boys are currently 14th on the log with just five points. The Port Elizabeth Bay side announced that former Free State Stars coach Luke Amar will take over at the Chili Boys until the end of the current season. The 40-year-old Siema joined Celtic in July this year, taking over from former coach Rulani Mokwena before the end of last season. Two months into the new season, five coaches have already lost their jobs in South Africa's top flight football. Black Leopards, Baraka FC, Maritzburg United and TX Galaxy have all changed coaches this season. Cheapest owner Sivio Mbengesi is known of firing coaches when results are not forthcoming and with the team sitting uncomfortably close to the relegation spots, the writing was on the wall for Siema after the team's loss to Amazulu on Sunday. You see Emma, he reminds me of Roger Skakan. He's my child, he's my... We, we click, we bond. Uh, we believe that we're gonna go and we're gonna be patient on him. Very much patient. <laughs> he's not those coaches that... Like with, with, with last season, with last season, we released him after the fourth game. Because we could see that he was gonna take us to the push. I mean, now see, look what it did to pull up on the seat. You know what I mean? So, with this one, we can see that he's a coach with a vision. So, we believe that uh, with him, we are going to achieve the great thing. Now, on the back of all of that, we're now joined on the line by sports journalist Clyde Clow to help us understand a little bit better on this matter. Good evening, Clyde, and welcome to Sport on the Full View. Uh, good evening and uh, thank you for having me. Okay, so now let's start with this question. I mean, we've heard the news today that CM has now been sacked by Cheaper United. My first question to you is, are you surprised that he has now been fired given the results of the team so far this season? And secondly, are you surprised that he lasted this long? Because we all know that Mr. Mbengezi is not shy to pull the trigger. Uh, surprised? Definitely not. I think... Uh uh, from the first game that uh, CMA lost, he knew that he was uh, the next 90 minutes away from the sack. And it has really taken long. If you look at uh, the last few results that he's had, I don't think they haven't been uh, positive. Uh, it, it was always coming. Cheaper, I was just talking to other, other journalists earlier that I, I would like to see if Chipa actually has a strategy to run his club. You know, properly run clubs will have a strategy for a season, um, the next five years and the next 10 years, some go as far as 20 years. Now, what is Chipper's actual strategy? From uh, the, the, the look of things, it looks like it's a game by game. Uh, you know, when people talk about their salaries, they say, I live month to month. I think with Chipper, it's game by game. Every coach, if you lose, the first game, you know, the next 90 minutes are crucial. You need to get a result. So it, it's very disappointing the way Chipa is being run. And uh, I'm really surprised, not just that uh, they've survived this long in the league, but I think by now they should have been gone to the first division the way they are being run. And as you mentioned, Clyde, it's quite difficult for a team to have stability if coaches are playing on the basis of almost a game-by-game -game basis. How much time does one really need to make sure that the team plays in the way that they want? I mean, uh, um, some coaches take a season or two just to get their squad to be performing at the level that they needed to. Uh, look, it's a case of when you want uh, orange juice, you don't just go and buy bananas and then you expect orange juice from it. I think you need to decide what fruits, uh, what juice you want and then go purchase the fruits that you want. With Keeper, I think it's a case of him having the players without any particular plan as to how he, he wants his team to play. When he goes to look for a coach, he just finds probably somebody who's affordable or somebody who's available and then brings them in. And you, you cannot really tell what is cheaper style of play. What, what are they looking to achieve with the club? Are they just there to play in the league? It seems that way. But I think if this is how they're going to operate, I don't see them lasting in the next two or three seasons. They, they'll be gone. And uh, I think if they can go back and decide what is their purpose, really? What, what are they trying to bring into football? If it's about skill and um, the normal disc as we know it in South Africa, then find the right coach for it. I'm thinking um, 
I think they had a, a great coach in Dan, Dan Smalisila, who was building a certain style. Chipper was enjoyable to watch. And then they brought in a Norman Mapeza, who made them very solid at the back. They were difficult to, to, to score at home. I think they were winning most of their games. Or, or they were just difficult to beat in their home ground. And then uh, Mapeza was out. And then came in Lisono Lothier, my young, passionate coach. We had just guided a struggling Celtic, you know, Celtic with their financial problems. You yeah. got them playing some great football. And then they brought him in. I was like, oh, right, maybe Chipa is heading to the right direction. He started speaking about, no, we're going to be patient with him. He changed his team this season. The team, I think the average age is about 23. And I thought, okay, now he has some bit of direction. If you have a team that's averaging about 23, you are expecting maybe winning the league in about five years. And the team was not doing that bad. They were just dropping points here and there. It's expected if you're building a team. Yes. But suddenly he was out. Uh, let's not forget there was uh, Coach Rulani, as some jokingly say, he was on an internship, which I don't think is a good way to put it. But just if you look at the coaches that he has had, you have a Norman Mapeza who's a defensively sound coach. You have a, a, a Lesho Nolo who likes youth and passion and speed. Then you have Rulani, who's an organized coach. You look at the previous coaches that have come in. It's just uh, some bit of fruit salad. I don't know what he's trying to make. A cocktail of football, maybe. Could possibly be a cocktail of football. Now, coaches that take up this job in Port Elizabeth know what kind of environment they are going into. Um, now, were you taken aback when CMA left Celtics to join Cheaper? As some said that he jumped from the pot straight into the fire. Um. And some may, might not know the backstory that uh, I think Celtic had financial problems. At some stage, there were reports that they might have to, to close shop in the middle of the season. But uh, they managed to carry it through. They got into a cup final and uh, another cup final. So it, it's a foundation. Remember, Siema didn't just pop and uh, he was in the top, uh, rather, rather coaching the first team at Celtic. He started with those kids from the... At the, the development side, the MDC side, and he was doing very well there. And then when the the coach left, he was then promoted along with Maduka, and it became easier. And one of the coaches, when you talk about processes, one of the coaches that grew with the team and did like what Siema did at Celtic was uh, Fadil Davis when he was at Maritzburg. Also started with the the MDC side and went on to to coach the senior side. He did well, and eventually he had to leave the club. So I think a bit of patience from Chipa with CMI. You would have built a very strong team, a very competitive team. I, I'm j I just feel like he was just a bit impatient with him. Contradictory to what he had said in terms of them giving him time to just build his team. Now, what do you make of the new coach, look, Amal, um, who left his last job in Tanzania with younger Africans in a fit rage where he hurled a whole bunch of insults at the team's fans, labeling them as illiterate and also calling them monkeys? Um. It, it, for for a lack of better words, I'll say I'm definitely disappointed with Chipa. Uh, it sounds like somebody who who's, who's not in the same planet as the rest of us. Because uh, uh, after what AML said, you know, we are in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement going around the world and everyone saying, look, it's about time blacks get the same respect as every other race. So what Emile said in, in Tanzania or to, to the young African fans, you know, those, that, that's one of the biggest clubs in Africa with a lot of fans there. And what he said, calling them illiterate and monkeys, it was just uncalled for. That was racist. And I think uh, in reaction to that, Safa wrote or rather wrote a scathing statement uh, with uh, more than over 2,000 words uh, in one of the highlight um, statement, uh, rather highlight uh, line in the statement, they said they will try to push the minister to ensure that uh, AML never gets to work in South Africa, he never gets to get a work permit. And ironically, that was in July, and now it's December, guess what, he's working right under Safa's nose. Um, so, Clyde, would we then take it to say that no further steps were taken in terms of that um, approach that was made to the minister at the time? Um, in the size, I, I know in my last uh, chat with Dominic, he said they will be writing to FIFA and inform them and uh, that uh, such a coach has uh, behaved in a manner that they, they feel it should not be allowed and try to push that he, he, he is not be, or rather, he not be allowed to work in Africa. And 
that they, the plan was to go along with the Tanzanian FA. And I think after young Africans took a decision, the board and said AML, it then became difficult. Like, uh, what, what do you then do? You say, we, we don't want this guy. He doesn't have a job anyway. But now that he's coming to cheaper, it will be interesting to see if cheaper, despite everything now let's just assume that he, he wasn't aware of all this now that it's out in the open uh the the the, the stories are out they're being pulled from the archives the sound clip is out there let's see how cheaper reacts to that if you go across i think it was in madrid when a young player um i think his name was guardiola he he joined madrid and after joining Madrid, a video came out of him saying that uh, he was saying some unsavory things about Madrid and spitting on the Madrid shirt, and his contract was terminated immediately. So it will be interesting to see how Chipa reacts to that. Clyde, thank you so much for your time here tonight. We will all wait in anticipation to see how this story unfolds. Have a good evening.